I'm Carl Anthony, Managing Editor of AutoVision News, and welcome to AutoSense Insights. We are speaking today with Wade Appleman. He is the Vice President of the Sensel Division of On Semiconductor. He's a longtime member of the AutoSense family, and Wade, welcome back. Good to see you again. Carl, it's great to see you too. A little different than the last time we were face-to-face, but good to see you virtually here. Yes, absolutely. I very much enjoyed your presentation recently for AutoSense Online and looking forward to, to, to getting caught up with you here. Um, but first, for those who may not be familiar with On Semiconductor, can you tell us a little bit about the company? Sure. You know, On Semiconductor is, uh, is a huge company. We're uh, uh, approaching $6 billion a year in annual sales with over 35,000 employees. And I'm part of a group called the Intelligent Sensing Group, which is really focused on image sensors, radar, and depth sensing solutions, including LIDAR. Uh, so On Semiconductor has, uh, has a long history in working in automotive in a lot of markets. And uh, we probably have worked with uh, a lot of your uh, viewers' companies in the past. Right. So you said the magic word, Wade, LIDAR. So but where do you see the LIDAR market going? How, how do you see the LIDAR market developing right now? Right. So, so LIDAR is, uh, is, is a form of depth sensing, uh, and there's a lot of ways to, to, to do depth sensing. And one of the ways to do that is with, with a LIDAR, LIDAR system. And, and there's a lot of technologies that, uh, that make up um, um, uh, the way to, to do depth. And, and that could include uh, radar, uh, imaging, uh, ultrasonic, and, and LIDAR uh, in particular. When we look at the LIDAR market, there's the market for robotic transport, uh, which could include delivery robots, industrial robots, agriculture robots, and specific to the auto sense industry, there's the um, depth sensing that's used for level three and level five autonomous vehicles. And that can include mass market OEM vehicles to, to robo, uh, robo taxis. And what you're seeing here on the screen is a list of, of, of uh, examples of level three to level five autonomous uh, vehicle providers uh, that have have been uh, making great great strides, um, but as we move to the the, the next slide here, um, this is sort of how the different um, technologies compare uh, for key features that are required uh, for depth sensing. So, for instance, you can see that lidar is great for uh, really good angular resolution, depth resolution, um, uh, but it may not be good, for instance, in color recognition as an example. So the LiDAR industry uh, is, is finding its space between where does it take over from imaging, how does it coexist with radar, and in some cases, how does it replace um, ultrasonic. This is how we view uh, the LiDAR, LiDAR systems uh, developing and, and being created. And there's really these core six building blocks that, that make up a, a, a LiDAR system. And it's everything from the transmit to the receive to the beam steering, the optics, the readout, and the power and subsystem. So, so this is what we see the industry looking for is how do you um, build a LiDAR system? How do you make it simple, cost effective, and improve uh, time to market? So the LiDAR market is, uh, is growing. Um, it has been a little bit stalled, I would say, um, as uh, as uh, uh, level three uh, vehicles uh, have taken a, maybe a year or two more uh, to get to market. Robo taxis, same type of, of of similar delays, but but the enthusiasm is still there, and the R and D dollars are absolutely pouring into um, building solutions using lidar in in automotive. There's there's no question about that. You know, Wade, as we look at these slides together, one thing that comes to mind for me, and we we have kind of touched on this, but Allow me to ask the question just a little more directly. What is on semiconductors LIDAR strategy? That's the first thing that comes to mind when I see these slides. Right, Carl, that's a, that's a great question. Thanks for asking. Um, so, so we want to provide through on semi as many of the components that are required for a LIDAR system as possible. And uh, the slide I'm showing here uh, shows those six building blocks that I just talked about and what's color coded are the blocks that on semi is is working towards building solutions for and we look at this in a holistic fashion um, we need to make sure that 
Uh, if we're going to tell you that the detector um, rail requires a certain voltage, we need to make sure our power management features can drive to that voltage line, for example. Or if we're talking about how to read out a uh, analog SIPM uh, to get a, a point cloud, we need to give you a reference design and show you the various discrete components that are required uh, to give you that, uh, that point cloud and, and histogram. So our strategy, again, is, is to do all of these uh, color-coded blocks, which really have traditionally focused on the transmit, uh, the readout, and the power and system requirements. Uh, we also have some uh, components for actuator drivers as well for those using mechanical uh, scanning. But maybe another way to look at it is what are we not specifically focused on? Uh, and we use ecosystem partners to deliver this, or in some cases, it's our customers' unique value add we don't want to compete against our customers who are, for instance, doing unique beam steering. So we work with all the various beam steering uh, solutions that are out there. Um, so it could be mechanical beam steering. It could be MEMS based. It could be optical phase arrays. We're agnostic to that. And we also do not build laser diodes or VIXELs. Um, that would be uh, done through partnership uh, with, uh, with VIXEL providers or laser, laser diode providers. But again, we, we try to bring the whole solution to market. We do this um, through a various, a wide variety of evaluation kits, which I can, which I can show you some demos of uh, here in a minute. For sure. And Wade, there was something you said a, a moment ago that, that stuck in my head, ecosystem. So <laughs> uh, you have an ecosystem of partners. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, that's a, um, something that we have seen is really required here. And if you really look at um, successful uh, new technology introductions through history, you see that, um, uh, for instance, the reason that Ethernet became so popular and, and widely driven was because uh, the semiconductor industry came together with the software industry, which came together with the system providers uh, to, to deliver Ethernet-based solutions to the market. Now, that's in telecommunications. This is in, in, in visualization of depth. But we've taken a, a, a similar strategy where you, you need to look at everything that's required. So. We have developed and we announced um, recently a partners program uh, that works with uh, module designers and manufacturers, so contract manufacturers that are building systems uh, or, or people that are um, building the software uh, infrastructure uh, for signal processing. We have partnerships uh, there. Um, we work with um, a wide variety of, of those complementary silicon providers, um, such as the Vixel providers, for example. And we work with um, components, well, those would be the component suppliers. And then we work with the actual uh, design customers themselves. And so, you know, we're really pleased to be able to announce uh, some of our customers that have given us permission uh, to, to let them know that they're using our technology inside. And if you're uh, an automobile OEM or you're an AGV customer or, or user or builder, I should say, you could go to a company like Blickfeld uh, out, of, out of Germany uh, RoboSense out of, out of China, SOS Labs in Korea, who are all using and are public with the fact that they're using uh, on semiconductor components uh, in, their, in their LiDAR systems. Uh, there are many others that are not public, but those are ones we, we can uh, clearly talk about. And, and just um, as for people to see, I have a slide each on uh, what the Blickfeld uh, solution looks like, uh, what the RoboSense solution looks like, and what the SOF Labs uh, solutions look like. Again, just representations of the, the type of partners that, that we're bringing uh, solutions to the market with. Right. So Wade, in, in addition to these new ecosystem partners, when we have talked in the past in Brussels and Detroit, we always cover your new products and your new innovation. So let's take a couple of minutes to talk about that now. Tell us about your, your latest products and innovations. Sure. So. What we've discovered in the market is how, um, for LiDAR in particular, and it's no surprise, but it's, it's really uh, important uh, distinction, is that it's one thing to bring a detector to sample stage. It's another thing to bring it to early volume, uh, uh, sort of what we'll call mid-volume mid production for industrial use. And then it's a whole nother thing to take something through the entire auto qualification process and be PPAP compliant, PPAP ready. And so the real changes or uh, uh, news items, if you will, on our products are taking the products that we may have um, 
been showing as samples a year, year and a half ago, and now can tell the market about the fact that they're uh, in the process or finally completed PPAP and auto qualification. So uh, two products I'll highlight uh, here in the, in the screen in front of you is we uh, have announced our 1 by 12 SIPM array that's fully auto qualified and a similar array that's 16 pixels of SIPMs that are also uh, PPAP auto qualified to the IATF 16949 standard. The other two products that I'd, I'd like to highlight um, uh, are the one millimeter SIPMs, which are also in the process of being auto qualified. And then although this is not auto qualified yet, it's a good example of, of a new technology that we're really, really excited about that I think the industry uh, is, is, is looking at very closely. And that's what we call our Pandian uh, 40 kilopixel uh, SPAD array. So it's 40,000 SPADs uh, that can be read out uh, in a column by column format to give both depth and intensity information. And um, SPAD arrays are, are really, really important to the industry. And many people may have not even known what a SPAD array is, but Apple um, a couple of months ago announced their new iPad Pro. And the iPad Pro uses a SPAD array inside uh, for depth sensing. So it's a direct time of flight uh, SPAD uh, imager. And uh, while that's uh, uh, not designed for auto and it's a different form factor than Pandian, um, it's really exciting because uh, we, we will start to see the use of, of this type of technology uh, in, in a broad range of markets, not just automotive, but consumer. And I think in the years to come, SPAD arrays are gonna become a really critical uh, type of uh, product. And the Pandian device is one of the first available large format SPAD arrays uh, that is shipping now. Right. So Wade, the, again, when I look at the slides here and, you know, I, I, I wish we were doing this in person. We've always done this in person in the past. So uh, that kind of leads us to COVID-19. And so how has that affected your business with on semiconductor? And then how has it affected your customers' business? Yeah. How, how, how have things changed? You know, I have to say I've been really, really proud of, of my team uh, on semiconductor in general, and, and it's been really impressive to work with, with our customers. Uh, we were able to develop protocols such that we never uh, had to close down in our labs, for example. So we were able to keep these new product introductions on target. We were working uh, with a number of uh, customers who had very uh, important deadlines to meet for their OEM. Uh, customers and uh, we were able to uh, uh, in, uh, bring in social distancing and, and keep the lab open uh, without without missing a beat. Um, our suppliers, the foundries, the packaging providers, uh, the test houses, um, equally were able to uh, to keep running um, during this uh, during during the the time when uh, so many businesses were shutting down. And and I think what we're seeing from the OEM side is. Uh, we're definitely seeing a, a quick snapback. Uh, you know, we're seeing that um, uh, OEMs um, certainly had uh, had had slowed down production, uh, may have uh, um, uh, pushed off uh, off orders and maybe launch dates a little bit. Um, but I think because the entire industry was able to continue to work, uh, we're a tech industry. We've embraced uh, uh, distance uh, meetings. Um, uh, that that as long as the consumer market comes back. Um, the, the technology uh, underpinnings uh, have, have been able to uh, progress over the last four to six months. So um, we're, we're, we're really uh, generally pleased. I will say um, it's been uh, disappointing sometimes to not be able to go to events, see people live and in person, and, and that we certainly miss and can't wait to, to get back to uh, again in the future. But, uh, but in general, the, we've been able to, uh, to really um, move forward nicely uh, in this uh, horrific time. Right. So, Wade, uh, just in the last few minutes that we have, I, I want to make sure that we've covered everything. So um, is there anything that we've missed? Is there anything you'd like to add or you'd like to summarize again about your LIDAR strategy or your ecosystem partners? Again, th thank you for the slides. The slides are excellent. So is there anything you'd like to share here just one more time? You know, I just like to remind everybody that, um, you know, we talk about uh, LIDAR as, as a technology. Um, 
and but but depth depth imaging is going to be really really important um and and lidar is a a way to do depth um and we're seeing wide adoption as i said for using lidar in in forward facing automobiles for distance we're seeing lidar starting to be used around the vehicle uh, for obstacle detection in shorter range and mid-range uh, we're also starting to see depth sensing technologies whether it's direct time of flight lidar based and indirect time of flight as well being used um, more in the traditional image sensor space in for, for in cabin monitoring. Uh, mm -hmm. So so I would just uh, continue to encourage uh, your audience, the audience that's listening to this, to to think about depth sensing and uh, and look to on semi to uh, talk about all your depth sensing needs. It's something that we're really focused on, and we're going to be a market leader in. You know, Wade, and and that reminds me, last question, but an important one. So let's say that. A prospective customer is watching this, they hear about the ecosystem partners, they hear about depth sensing, and they say, I'm sold on this. I'd like <laughs> to learn more. <laughs> how, how can they get in contact with you, Wade? What's the, what's the best way? Yeah, you know, um, you know first of all, I, I actually love hearing directly from, from customers. So frankly, I'll put the slide up with my, uh, with my email address on it, and I'd encourage uh, anybody that has a direct question to just uh, directly email uh, wade.appleman at onsemi.com. Um, if that's uh, the other way to go is just to the onsemi.com website and you can uh, search for uh, SIPM and that brings you to a landing page uh, with all types of uh, information about our LiDAR solutions. Uh, it has uh, download links for reference designs. It has data sheet references, shows you where you can buy uh, samples. So just onsemi.com uh, keyword SIPM and, and you'll, you'll get it. Uh, and then lastly, um, we have a tremendous network of, of distributors uh, that, uh, that support our product. So um, whether it's Aero or Avnet or EBV or Mauser or DigiKey, um, as well as direct sales organization, um, we can really support you uh, and, and your needs. Sure. Well, Wade, from all of us here at AutoSense, we want to wish you the best of luck going forward. Um, and I'll look forward to getting caught up with you at a future conference. We'll have to have a cup of coffee together and get caught up uh, at some point down the road. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good, Carl. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate everybody You're watching. You're welcome. As speaking today with Wade Appleman from On Semiconductor. For more content from AutoSense, visit our hub and our YouTube channel, just search AutoSense.